Hi everyone, in this problem we have to integrate uh, dx over 4 minus x squared from 0 to 1. So there's you know, a couple ways of doing this. You can use partial fractions or you can use a formula. Let's, let's try to use a formula. Let me show you what formula uh, I have in mind. So the integral of du over 1 minus u squared is equal to the following. So we have two actual cases in this formula. So one case is the inverse hyperbolic tangent of u plus c. And this case is valid uh, if the absolute value of u is less than 1. The other case is the inverse hyperbolic cotangent of u plus c. And this case is valid if the absolute value of u is greater than 1. So in this problem, we first have to figure out uh, how to even make this look like this. So you'll notice there's a 4 here. So what we'll do is we'll basically pull out a 1 fourth like this. 1 fourth dx. And basically, I'm factoring out a 4 from the bottom. So we have 1 minus x squared over 4. And we're going from 0 to 1. And we're not quite there yet. right? We need to have u. So this is equal to. 1 fourth, definite integral from 0 to 1, dx over 1 minus, and let's write x squared over 4 as x over 2 squared. Okay, now let's focus on making this match this. So now we'll make our u substitution. So we'll let u be equal to x over 2. And then so du, well, the derivative of x is 1, so you just get 1 half dx. Then you have to make this look like what's in your integrand. There's not really a 1 half there, so multiply both sides by 2. So we have 2 du equals dx. So now we'll, we will replace the dx with 2 du. And in fact, I'll pull out the 2, so I'll write it like this 2 fourths. Here we have our du, right? Because dx is 2du, that's all we've done so far, over 1 minus u squared. And now we need to figure out our u values, right? Because here we have x values, these need to become u values. So let's change our limits of integration. Whenever you make a u substitution, you're supposed to change your limits. So when x equals 1, u is equal to 1 over 2. So that's going to change our upper limit. And then when x equals 0, u is equal to 0 over 2, which is 0. Basically, I'm just plugging it in here, by the way, into this top one. So our upper limit is still 0. So now we see what's going on. You see, we're integrating between 0 and 1 half. So u is a number between 0 and 1 half. That means that the absolute value of u is less than 1. Boom. That means we're using this formula. Really, really nice way to do a problem, I think. It's a little bit different. It's good to think a little bit. Uh, differently sometimes. So this is equal to 1 half, okay, and then we have the inverse of the hyperbolic tangent of u. And we don't need to see because this is a definite integral. So instead I'll insert a bracket. And just to be really clear, I'm going to specify that these are actually u values. So u equals 0 and u equals 1 half. All right, now we just plug everything in, right? So this is equal to 1 half, okay? And this is the tanch inverse, okay? Tanch inverse of uh, 1 half, so 1 over 2, minus, okay, minus. And then this is uh, 1 half tanch inverse of zero. Okay, tanch inverse of zero. So the tanch inverse of zero is zero, and that's and that's because uh, recall that the hyperbolic tanj inverse of say x is equal to one half ln one plus x over one minus x. And this is valid for the absolute value of x less than one. So when you plug in zero here, 
you get the natural log of 1, which is 0. So this whole thing is just 0. This is equal to 1 half times the inverse of the hyperbolic tangent of 1 half. And that would be the value of the definite integral. I hope this video has been helpful to someone in the world. Good luck.